Superman, Son of Kal-El, issue 17. Tom Taylor writing, seeing Tormey on the art. <sighs> so, obviously, Cal's back on Earth. John and him are, you know, they're racing to another planet. Um, it's a fun little sequence at the start. Uh, the main gist of this one, though, is that John feels that he needs to talk to his dad about being bisexual, about the fact that he has a boyfriend, and mm-hmm. feels nervous about doing it, even though his dad's Superman, literally the most understanding man on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> Which is obviously kind of like a little bit, of, it's a, that's a little yeah. funny to the reader, I think. But obviously... Yeah, not just that, but it is a, you know, this father-son type of story to where, at the end of the day, John is still looking for acceptance from his dad, even though Clark's never done anything to for for John to feel doubt about it. But it's still just one of those things that John's nervous about and he can't, you know, and he just can't help it. And it's a very human emotion coming out of a, you know. I mean, I think that's a very realistic thing. I mean, I think what it it gets into here, because I think even if someone's never given you a reason to doubt Mm -hmm. how they're going to react to something, I think it's very human just to, like, worry about, yeah, but what if I'm surprised and it's the worst possible reaction? And I think... That's something I think I felt about just weird random things. I think the fact I think if you're someone who is you know gay or bisexual or, or you know mm-hmm. anything, whatever on that spectrum, mm-hmm. I feel like yeah that that it, there's so much like and it's I think it's something that Superman actually says when they finally have the conversation after John's in mm-hmm. the hospital because of the you know the red sin stuff. Um, yep. I think he says it, it sucks that the world has made you question that I might not be okay with this, and yeah, yeah it's kind of the society thing where. You know, there's such a big deal uh, made about coming out and about the reactions to coming out. And not because it's fabricated, because, yeah, there is a lot of people who react badly to it, right? Mm-hmm. It's well, very well documented. And yep. I think that's been something that, you know, saddens Superman as a really poignant beat in this book. I think this mm-hmm. issue is very focused, and it's very focused in a way that I, I really like, in that not only does it all revolve around John eventually having this conversation with Clark... But you have Clark and John having this scene where John can't speak to him about it. And then you have a scene with Clark and Pa Kent, uh, with him sort mm-hmm. of getting fatherly advice from his dad, you know, the you know, the dad of comics, yep. effectively, and Pa Kent, about how to approach this and how he feels yep. bad about how John doesn't want to speak to him about it. And, you know, Pa Kent obviously gives him some good advice. So the fact that we're getting Pa Kent advice to Clark... And then we get, you know, Clark being a good dad to... You know, there's a, there's a nice generational, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, trickle down that's happening in yeah. this issue. Which oh, really and like. it kind of reinforces that the reason that Clark's the way he is is because he was raised by the Kents. Yeah. You know? And I just like that he's questioning it. And he goes, how could John possibly believe I'd want anything other than his happiness? And Pa looks at him and goes, how? Because some fathers don't. Or they do care and they're just too worried about how it reflects on them or some other cowardly nonsense. And it's just, it's, again, like you said, he's comics dad, or DC comics dad, you know, and he's explaining to the most powerful man, right? Um, these these strong emotional things. Um, and I just, I love that relationship. I'm glad that Pa Kent's back for Clark to have a conversation like this with him. Yeah. Um, it's really good stuff. I mean, the the Red Sin thing, um, mm-hmm. it's not weak. It's, it's perfectly fine. And obviously it has to be there to set up why... Uh, yep. You know, we get this conversation with with, with John in the hospital. Uh, yep. Like, I, I, I think you know, it's just fine. We're building up to what this plot's going to be in the next issue. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's it's the part of the issue that feels the, you know, the most like, oh, it's just there because we have to have this action sequence uh, to set up well, this next thing. Because because the the main part of the issue yeah. is the three conversations. It's the right. first conversation with Superman and uh, John. The second right. conversation with Paquette, and then the third one in the hospital. In the hospital, yeah. And the Red Sin stuff, I feel like this is where it's kind of tying into Metallo. Because I feel like this is this is Red Sun version of that, where, you know, Metallo has the kryptonite heart, but Red Sin has this this Red Sun energy that can, you know, yeah. hit hit the hit the Kryptonians and, and take their powers for a hot second. Um, uh, and, this is, uh, and we know the know. red red suns do that, so this is just yeah. setting that up. Um, right. And his name is Red Sin, though, Matt. Just to no, us... no, I know, but <laughs> I feel like yes. But I you call them like... Red Sun there like twice, so I'm, I'm just making it clear. I, I was meaning the Red Sun energy, yes. That with, but but here he's using that um, to to make him vulnerable. 
which I do think that's again Taylor playing with the, you know, John is vulnerable at the hospital. To oh talk no, to his... I, I get like I get those like subtext yeah. of it, right? The idea that he calls for his dad and his dad has to come save him, like literally yep. catches him as he's falling out the window. Yep. Uh, like and the, yeah, he does feel vulnerable. Like and that's the point. He's he's making it literal, which is good writing. Yep. Like all that's yep, good. Yep. Um, the the only thing I'm really saying is that you know all of the strengths of this issue are in the one on one conversations, right. and then you know the action seems fine, and it's there to set up, but it's there to set up, and mm-hmm. it's it's you know it's well done enough. Uh, but it's it's the heart to heart. Uh, after it that that you know works and it's one mm-hmm. of the best issues of the run because it is just this kind of heartfelt conversation between them yeah um so good and then the ending sets up that lex is in some way kind of behind uh mm-hmm. or not, not even behind red sin but he's plotting i mean always plotting because we know he's doing stuff yeah. with metallo uh over in action comics yeah so um yeah project blackout is uh what he says yep. uh to whoever yep. he's yeah, part working of on project yeah um, it looks like it was one of the, um, one of the people that, that, uh, Bendix was using, mm. um, one, one of those type. So, um, but yeah, him, him taking the saw out at the end. Very, very terrifying. Uh, cause who knows what he's doing to this dude. Uh, b- <clears throat> building a super villain, no doubt. Uh, of course. You know, it's um, you know, it's, it's, it's Lex doing his thing and just sort of complaining that ah, they'll soon see you know John and Clark Kent for what they really are. They're not human beings. They don't deserve empathy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know, um, which is a really interesting page to get after this this very heartwarming issue, which is all about the father mm-hmm. and son bond between them and how human they actually are. Uh, yeah. So it, it's you know to cut to Lex at the end being like they are not humans they don't deserve empathy which almost feels like a caricature of someone who is homophobic and like yeah oh yeah you know they're not mm-hmm. people no, no, no. I, and I feel like Lex is also the person like I don't care uh, what you are but why are you in my face about it and John's just like I'm just trying to exist you know like um, it feels very much of that same stuff I also love when um, we we get dr midnight taking care of of john which i like which is the the second dr midnight so yeah, yeah. we're already getting some of those jsa ties but um where he tells uh clark tells john that nightwing's investigating he goes oh okay then and he goes to rest and then uh dr midnight's telling someone hey you can't come in here so i was like yeah that's not gonna work in uh um i'm drawing a blank jay, I'm, I'm, jay there you go Jay, Jay runs through Dr. Midnight and it's a very nice moment of, you know, you're, you're unstoppable. And, you know, I, I'm untouchable. We're not supposed to have these type of interactions. I just love that whole, you know, sentiment there. So. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's a very sweet issue. I mean, the art from Tormi is, you know, it's been consistent with what it's been, yeah. which for me is good, but it's a little bit clean mm-hmm. at times for my taste. You know, sometimes it feels yeah. a little too, glossy in places and flat but mm-hmm. uh certainly not bad and certainly consistent with what, it, what it's been and yeah uh it, it does nail some of the expressions on their faces in the key moments which is good mm-hmm. uh and it's probably the thing this issue needed the most more than anything else uh so yeah yeah sweet issue yeah. uh what are you giving it matt uh, i'm gonna give this an eight I'm gonna go. I'll, I'll go a little nudge. I'll say eight point five. I, I think okay. the the heart of this one uh, really works. So okay. yeah, I, th- I think I'm. I'll, I'll go with eight point five.